How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now 2017 was a very good year for AMD with them being selling thousands if not millions of GPUs because of the cryptocurrency boom and then also because they launched the Ryzen series. Now in the past few years AMD didn't really perform that well with the CPU range but now after the Ryzen's launch they actually stepped up to Intel with a very good performance and price. Especially if you take a look at the Ryzen 7 series where it was the first budget related uh, consumer grade 8 core CPUs that you can actually buy and we're looking, looking at some of Intel's 8 core CPUs that were just way too expensive and the normal person couldn't really have bought it including myself and when Rebel Tech sponsored my system I opted to go for the 1800X because of those 8 cores and because it's just going to work perfectly for video editing. Now gaming wise it was still a bit lacking behind Intel with their Ryzen 7 series but it wasn't really that far behind and you did get more cores that was going to work perfectly for uh, production wise but their Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 3 series did perform very well against Intel with sometimes even binning out Intel completely and it was just a better CPU to buy for the price. But now on less than a month on April the 19th, AMD is bringing out their new 2000 series AMD processors which we are all very very excited for. Now in this video I'm going to quickly go over all of the prices, the specs and just some of the benchmarks we already have before the official launch. But now with all of that being said, let's get into everything we know about the new 2000 series Ryzen CPUs right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get the best deals on all the latest gaming products? Well, Rebeltech is the best place to check out. They have a huge variety of peripherals, PC components, laptops and just everything else you would need. And also from all your favorite brands like a Gigabyte, Asus, Corsair and many more. So go check out rebeltech.co.za to get the products you are looking for at a low price. So firstly, taking a look at the prices of these new Ryzen 2000 series, we can see that they did pop out on Amazon with some few prices there and we did also get some prices uh, from AMD themselves and from what we can see is that it is going to be cheaper than what the first generation Ryzen CPUs were at launch. Now they're not cheaper than the current Ryzen CPUs because they did get a massive price drop. But at launch they are cheaper than what the first generation was uh, but we can perhaps see that the first generation series is going to drop more when uh, these 2000 series is going to come out. So from these prices we can see that they are going to be cheaper than Intel's equivalent CPUs but again that's just to beat them out with like one dollar or so but from the prices we can see that the 2700X is going to go for around 369 dollars the 2700 is going for around 299 dollars the 2600X is going for 249 dollars and then the 2600 that one is going to go for around 199 dollars so for the price they are again competing very well against Intel but now you guys probably saw that there is no 2800X something like that because we did have an 1800X. Well we currently don't have any confirmed uh, leaks about the 2800X. Uh, but we have seen that there was something popping up uh, that is going to be a 12 core that it can go up to 5.1 gigahertz. Now again, we don't have any real confirmation about that yet, but perhaps we'll see something like that. Now as for some clock speeds comparing uh, the 2000 series against the 1000 series, we can see that they are a tiny bit higher. They're not really a gigahertz or anything like, like that. They're mostly 300 to 500 megahertz increase. But we have to understand that it is still just a refresh and not an entirely new chipset. So for that we'll have to wait until 2019 when they bring out the entire new chipset of uh, CPUs. Now comparing the 2000 series to Intel's equivalent CPUs, we can still see uh, that Intel does have higher clock speeds uh, than uh, the 2000 series, but that is always going to be like that. Intel favors less cores but at a higher clock speed, whereas AMD wants to go for a bit more raw power with 8 cores and then a bit slower clock and a bit lower clock speeds then. So it depends on what programs you use and what you uh, want to use it for. Uh, more cores at slower speeds or uh, less cores at a much faster uh, clock speed. 
but the 2000 series is a lot closer than what the first generation was to the uh, Intel CPUs so it's good to see that they are boosting up that core clocks a tiny bit. And then next up getting into the benchmarks now these are a leaked benchmarks so they're not confirmed confirmed yet uh, so for that which again we'll have to wait until april 19th to actually see how they perform but these are from some reliable sources so we can trust them uh, hopefully but it does show that the cpus do perform quite well when looking at the firestrike ultra physics benchmarks we can see that the 2700X does perform very well, beating out the Core i7-8700K at about 1,200 points and even more uh, against the 1700X or the 1800X. Then as for Cinebench, we can see that the, for multi-core test, it does have a steady lead over both uh, the 8700K, the 1800X and the 1700X. Uh, as for the single core performance, we know that is where it's going to be a bit lacking because it is slower than Intel. And for that, it only beats out the i5-7600K, but it is well above the first generation series CPUs and even beating out their third ripper range. And then as for the next benchmark, that is run on SciSoft Sandra. I don't know everything about this benchmarks, but it does show uh, some information about how the CPUs perform. And with that, we can see uh, that it just lags behind Intel's range, again, only beating out the i5-7600K in the whetstone test. But with the dry stone test, it beats out everything, including Intel's i9 range and AMD's Threadripper CPUs. Now again, I don't really know everything about uh, these uh, benchmark software, so but they do show up and they do perform quite well, so we are going to look at that. And then finally is the Geekbench benchmarks. Now I'm not too exactly sure if this is a precise test, being that the 2700X only ran at 3.7 gigahertz from what we can see. Uh, but it did score in single core performance, it did score 4,746 and in multi-core it scored 24,772 whereas the official 1700X score was 4,062 in single core and 21,023 in multi-core taste. So the 2700X does beat out the 8700K in multi-core performance, but unfortunately it lags behind in single core performance like uh, we know it would have. But we do also have a benchmarks leak for the 2600X, which does perform quite well, uh, beating out the 2700X in single core performance, but not in multi-core, scoring 4,781 in single core test and 22,235 in the multi-core test, beating out the 1600X with quite a few points. And then as for some game benchmarks, these are only from AMD themselves, where we can see that the 2700X is about 7.7% slower than the 8700K. Because games, of course, do prefer higher core clocks and is not completely optimized for 8 or more cores. But it was about 5% faster than the 1800X. And it was a bit funny to see that AMD did use uh, GTX 1080 for their benchmarks and not something like their Vega GPUs. So that just also kind of shows us that they also do prefer uh, the better GPU, which is just interesting. And then some other benchmarks that were leaked that shows uh, the memory latency uh, did increase compared to the first generation, which is good as well. And then we do have some bunch of other more in-depth benchmarks, which was kind of a bit boring. So if you guys want to read up a bit more on that, I will leave links for all of these benchmarks in the video description uh, where you can just read up a bit more on that. So that's pretty much it for their main benchmarks, but there are some other features uh, that the new uh, 2000 series will have, like Precision Boost 2 and also Precision Boost Overdrive. So first up, all of the 2000 series Ryzen CPUs will have Precision Boost 2. So that's just kind of like Intel's Turbo Boost, where it would boost the core clocks uh, when it's running something more uh, intensive, and then it calculates just the temperatures and all of that, so it is in, a, in an acceptable range. But now as for XFR, which is Extended Frequency Range, 
That unfortunately will only be available on the X series chips and it will work also on any 300 or 400 series motherboards. But now as for precision boost overdrive, that's just something that takes it to a step further than normal precision boost. That unfortunately is only to going to work on 400 series motherboards. So if you are looking to get the maximum performance out of your CPU, especially if you do have one of the X CPUs, then you might want to go for the uh, 400 series motherboards, which will also be coming out at around the same date as other CPUs. So you will just go for that. But otherwise, if you're not gonna go for the X CPUs, the 300 series boards will be fine uh, for that because AMD did say that all of the CPUs until 2020 is going to run on their AM4 socket, which is really good news. Uh, so you can buy a decent board now and then you'll be able to use it until 2020, which is really awesome. I uh, only hope now Intel will do something like that as well, but we never know. And then finally, just taking a look at the TDP for these new CPUs. And now most consumer grade CPUs do have a TDP of 65 watts. And that is the case for most of these uh, 2000 series as well. But the X range does have a bit higher TDP with the 2600X coming at 95 watts and the 2700X coming at 105 watts. Now, we did see uh, that the Ryzen first generation did perform quite well just on normal air coolers. I actually run my, my 1800X on just a normal Coolmaster 212 Turbo, which works perfectly fine for that. So you'll be able to run it on just air cooling, or of course you can go for water cooling and that will kind of be the best but you are also gonna get an included air cooler with the CPUs, which didn't really happen with uh, the first generation. You didn't get it with the X uh, CPUs. So it is nice to see that we are gonna get an included free uh, CPU cooler. Yeah, free stuff is always awesome. So that's pretty much it for everything we know so far about uh, the 2000 series Ryzen CPUs. Now, before the launch on April 19th, we'll probably get some more leaked benchmarks here and there. So if you guys want to stay up to date with all of that, just click on the subscribe button and then follow the tech news series where I do talk about all of the leaked benchmarks and all of that, uh, which is on every Friday. But from these benchmarks and all of this, we can see uh, that the new Ryzen 2000 series is looking promising. They are gonna perform very well and they will beat Intel in a lot of uh, the benchmarks marks now gaming wise intel will still be king uh, we don't know yet for the some of the other ryzen 3 or the ryzen 5 cpus like the 2400 for example with the first generation they did perform very well against intel but for what we know now uh, these ryzen 2000 series won't beat intel's range completely now they do look very promising, yes, but if you do already have something like a 1700 or an 1800X, I wouldn't really say it's worth upgrading just for that tiny bit more performance, which is probably gonna still be around a five to 15% increase, which for the price and everything, I can't justify really upgrading just for that. You will still be able to use your, uh, your old motherboard, but for that precision boost overdrive, you're gonna need the 400 series motherboards and it's just not worth uh, that upgrade. But if you are upgrading from an older generation or from Intel side, then uh, these 2000 series uh, CPUs is going to look very promising and you can just get some of these new 400 series motherboards as well. So I'm really looking forward to what these new Ryzen CPUs will be able to do once we actually get our hands on them and see uh, how they perform in games and then just all of some of the other real world applications, for example, like video editing, uh, which I personally want to take a look at. So that's pretty much it for everything we know about these new Ryzen 2000 series uh, CPUs. There will be coming out more benchmarks and leaks uh, in the near future. So I will keep you guys up to date on that. But if you guys did like this video, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always. Also, if you are looking to get these new Ryzen 2000 series for yourself, drop a comment down below. Let me know uh, if you want to, are you excited? Just anything on your mind, let me know down there. But anyway, thanks for watching guys and I will check all of you next time. Cheers guys.